Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Dickon Hall this afternoon. Um, Dickon, the art historian and expert uh, on, um, amongst other things, the artist Colin Middleton. We're delighted to have in our uh, 1st of March sale four works, four oil paintings by uh, Colin Middleton that all date from uh, the early 1970s. And uh, Dickon, you're very welcome. Great to see you again. Thank you very um, much. So the there are two the 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 first two that come up in the sale are remarkably similar. Um, one is called seated figure with yellow coffee pot, and the other one is called striped figure, and they're from 1971 and 1972. Um, maybe talk to me a little bit about what was going on for Middleton at that stage in the early 70s. Yeah, it's a very it's a very interesting period because in a in a funny way. You could look at the early 70s as a sort of point of change, as a sort of breaking point um, from one period to, to another. Um, because by this stage in the in the late 60s, early 70s, I mean, Middleton had um, had been able to give up teaching because he'd been given a bursary by the Arts Council. He was having the regular shows with um, Hendricks Gallery in Dublin, Caldwell Gallery, um, and had reached quite a level of commercial success. And I think during the 60s, he'd had five shows with the Arts Council of Northern Ireland, which culminated in this big touring show that also went to Scotland. So, you know, by the by sort of 1971, 72, he was very established, um, you know, just, just in his early 60s. And in many ways, um, you know, these works are sort of, you know, show the journey from in the 1960s. Um, and then what's interesting about Middleton, I think, is that never sits still. So, you know, the, the periods after this sort of, in a way that we're just not seeing with these paintings, but that just comes afterwards is when he starts traveling, he goes to Australia um, and then he goes to Barcelona a couple of times in the in the early seventies. And the work transforms in the wilderness series is the, the big thing sort of from the mid seventies. And these works are fascinating, I think, because they they show the point he's reached in the, in the early seventies. Um, but also, in some ways, they do begin to prefigure what what comes next. Um, and Middleton is always this. To me, there's never um, sort of a shift that happened without any explanation. There are gradual changes. So um, the one with coffee pots very interesting because you know it, it's um, it linked back to to the way he was beginning to paint in the seven in the sixties, where there is a slightly more there's a more abstract treatment of the figure. Um, slightly more schematic, very sort of careful arrangement of, of shapes across the canvas, so you get beautifully balanced paintings. Um, uh, but also the the um, the colour is almost unusual. Middleton in the sixties, apart from a, a what we know one brief series, it, the works are often um, sort of fairly muted in colour. And so you look at this painting and the whole mood of it, the um, very relaxed feel, and you know it almost seems to look forward to. To the Barcelona paintings, where there is this sort of intense light and sunshine, um, and also this sense of narrative, which is intriguing. This woman who, with a coffee pot, seems to be reading, um, yeah, you know, um, or writing. You know, it's, it's sort of an, an intriguing painting because you can almost see um, a change coming in it. That, that mentally, you know, he's open to, to new things happening in the work um, that will be unleashed by these travels. Um, and the seated figure is intriguing. I think it's just so ambitious and intriguing to form. You know, there's there's mm. really nothing else. That, you know, it's a painting purely about um, formal arrangements, about treatment of the figure. Um, you know, and it shows. I think in both these paintings, there are elements of an abstract language that I think has come through Middleton, uh, looking back at design, uh, which was obviously the big influence in his early career was as a, a designer in the linen industry. And for many years, I think he, he he sort of almost fought that. And then in in about 1960, I think he found a way to introduce that into his paintings to, to provide this sort of abstract language and abstract framework. So there's lots of patterning and things that, mm. um, you know, to me reflect that. So they're, they're fascinating paintings because they show so much of where he's come from. And also they do indicate, I think, where he's going next in some way. Because what, what struck me is that both uh, CG figure with the yellow coffee pot and the striped figure, obviously uh, figures of uh, female figures, both sitting with their legs crossed. But the contrast in the treatment 
um, the sort of the angularity and the sort of more sort of abstracted picture is the one from 71, uh, the striped figure. Um, and it contrasts remarkably, and it's probably a more, it's definitely a more muted palette. And it contrasts markedly with the one the following year, this with this incredible bright yellow, but also the 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 lovely curvaceous figure, more, you know, more rounded, more representational, I suppose. Um, I wonder what was going on there, why they would be so similar in many ways in terms of their form, um, but quite different as well in the in the treatment. Yes, I mean, the, you know, as you know, the female figure was so key to Middleton and the sort of idea of the, the female as, as an archetype the whole way through and often linking into other ideas like the, the natural world and the sort of fecundity of the natural world. And I think, you know, that he's able to continually reinvent the female form in his work. You know, it's extraordinary. Um, you know, so um, and, and the other female figure you have in this in the, the sale as well, which I think is, again, a really good painting. Um, you know, it just shows his ability to go back to the female figure and and take new things from it. You know, the uh, the seated figure is, is almost sort of um, something of Picasso, and I think it's a slightly more um, maybe a more sort of eroticized picture, or something. You know, which definitely was an element of you know Middleton's age. You know that that does come into to his sort of um, you know the female figures, um, and and I think also the the mood the 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 yeah. idea of the in the the um 1972 painting there there are sort of some in the 60s more domestic elements in middleton's paintings that come in so there are paintings of his wife playing the piano there are paintings of one of yeah. his daughters um reading you know that he uh you know so so you almost get the sense of someone being watched um in a yeah. there's a yeah, in a very in a very sort of innocent way, there's almost yes. a sense of of sort of observation. Um, yeah. Whereas the seated figure to me is very much the 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 artist and model, a bit like Picasso. You know, it's an artist looking at the woman and this sort of you know incredible engagement between them. Yeah, um, and it's a you know so it's it, as you said, it's very interesting. The and then the the, the third one um, is the sense of the woman almost belonging in the landscape that she's treated in a more abstract way a very gentle way and then you get this suggestion of a landscape like behind <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know um which would figure very much with his idea of the female archetype being being very closely aligned with nature with the natural landscape um you know so they demonstrate the sort of the range of work he produced you know without sort of chopping and changing ever there was there was this sort of um sort of richness and depth in his work Absolutely. And I think what, what's interesting about the the third one, the figure in landscape from 1971, is that um, it's much more textured and patterned in many ways than the other, than the two sort of early ones that we've talked about. And you can just, you know, when you look at the picture in, you know, up close, the impasto, the level, the amount of paint that he has applied, but also in a very controlled fashion. And it just it just delivers such uh, beauty, uh, coupled with those sort of earthier tones. But it's but there's also this lovely pattern that that runs down the uh, the right hand side of the picture, sort of balancing the balancing the figure. Um, but then the 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 third picture that we have, sorry, the fourth picture we have um, is lot number seventy eight, and it's a Morn uh, landscape from nineteen seventy four. So at this stage in 1974, had he been to Australia and come back or was he still? Um... Um, he'd been to Australia and come back and was sort of involved in, in most of the world in the series were, were completed and he'd been to Barcelona, I think the year before the first time. So his work was changing, but then I think they were still spending their summer holidays um, in um, around about the morns. They had a, Middleton's had a caravan, which... Um, would go it, for I think a lot of the sixties it, it was around um Loch Earn. And then I think in the um late sixties, early seventies possibly it went to um, or at different times they've said they would go to the Morns as well. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, there's a there's a maybe a sense in that of Middleton settling back into this way he he had been looking at the Irish landscape um in the sixties. I mean to me he he sort of reinvents the Irish landscape in the sixties. Um you know there's a there's a totally different 
a view of it. I mean, which is very much about the, the in a way, the sort of not just how it looked, but the sort of geological structure, the idea of history, and this sort of great attention to the effect of of light on it. You know, trying to sort of pin down um, a lot of different elements within the image. Hmm. And um, you know, so I think I think even though it's 1974, it probably linked back to those paintings in the 60s, early 70s, um, and you know, and and has that sort of um, that ability Middleton had to respond very much to where he was at the moment, you know, to very much open himself up, and then find a visual language to to deal with it. Um, yeah. But intriguing, as you said, with the, the the figure in the landscape, but the sense of you know. Um, the figure who you know and then the landscape almost sort of so subtly sort of emerging and um and ideas of pattern i think sort of pattern um you know was very important to middleton as a way of um you know describing space as a way of organizing the picture space uh, but also as a way i think of um i always feel there's something possibly this is just maybe there's almost something autobiographical about middleton looking at elements of design there's almost a sense you know of him looking back at a part of himself that he he'd, he'd sort of separated off from the painter before and mm. now he's able to sort of have these two working together and obviously design then becomes very important in the wilderness series yes. um but i, I just think that the continuity in his work is interesting because there's, there's a great painting from the early 50s um called gypsy yard glass which has um the the female figure with this sort of colored i think it's almost like a colored curtain beside her but the colour curtain is almost like a very colourful version of the same sort of shapes in the landscape in in your painting. So you know, it's a right. there's there's a, an awful lot of continuity in his work, and um, and I think you know, exploring these ideas, he never really reaches the end of ideas. He keeps sort of unfolding things. I think. Yeah, and I suppose that's what everybody associates with Middleton is the variety of his work, and that you know, every so often he seemed to, you know desire to do something which was completely different to what had gone before but as you said earlier there is a sort of progression in in his in his work which is uh you know which which you can identify but i just wonder um what what influence you mentioned in in one of your um your essays for us in the catalog about uh the architect uh, noel campbell what what did um what what was collins um relationship with him and what what did noel uh, campbell um commission what sort of work did he commission well there were a number of, of works it's, it's really interesting and i think it's um it's a fascinating sort of you know in, in a way not just artistically but architecturally i mean there are these extraordinary buildings which um noel campbell was designing um for clients um and and, and sort of in some cases public clients in um, public bodies in Northern Ireland in the, I think from sort of about 1957 onwards, he seems to have met Colin Middleton um, when Middleton moved, moved up to Port Rush. So a lot of them would be that there were mosaics for the outside of buildings. There were um, at other times paintings on on boards that were that were going into to buildings um, and, and, and sort of more traditional murals. But I think they were, it, to me, it seems to have, um, it, it obviously came at a point when Middleton had had a you know difficult time for in the mid fifties and um, taking on this teaching job and I think something very, that he found very stimulating about this um, and and you know it's a sort of strange collaboration but it seems to have really worked in terms of reinvigorating certain aspects of him as a painter and um, the you know the, the the mosaics things are, are fascinating and the, you know in some cases that they're still there um, and. But I think they've brought back elements of design to his painting. A great sense of the word you used earlier, texture. You know, he was um, collecting shells, collecting stone, you know, um, and making sort of, you know, I think there's a great sense of texture um, that then he was able to bring into his paintings. So I think it's a fascinating. I mean, it's, you know, it's, um, um, it, it, it's an area of study in itself almost. Sure. But I think the idea that he was then able to look at, you know aspects of design aspects of abstraction and um bring them back into his paintings and it, and it works very much with the sort of the, the chronology of his paintings that around 1959 60 his paintings changed again a lot and i i would think there is a there is quite a close connection with yeah. just that stimulus of the noel campbell uh, partnership 
No, it was certainly it was a very valuable uh, collaboration, obviously, uh, for both of them. And uh, it's great that that so you know that there are still some extant in in situ. Um, yeah. yeah, I think we've probably sold one or two pieces that were specifically designed for some of uh, Noel Campbell's buildings uh, over the over the years. Um, so finally, what I just wanted, to, and something that's always sort of um, that that I've often wondered, and it isn't specifically about Colin, but it's a you know in many ways you could relate it to so many of the northern uh, painters, just how outward looking they were compared to their um, you know that their their peers south of the border who seemed to be sort of you know, infatuated with, um, you know, a different kind of landscape, much more, um, you know, looking at uh, fairly representational views of Connemara, West of Ireland generally. Um, what was it about the, 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 the background or the education for a lot of these Northern artists that created that difference? It's very interesting. And I mean, in a way, it's very interesting because where Middleton came from um, originally was his, you know, he was a great admirer of someone like Hans Eitan. I mean, his, his own father was a, was a sort of fairly traditional painter. He loved Hans Eitan's work. Um, you know, I, I think I think there's a respect for the tradition they come from in the North. Um, but then, to me, I mean, Middleton in particular, I think there's, um, you know, his landscape paintings in the late, late 40s for Victor Waddington that sort of transformed... Um, you know the vision of the Irish landscape at that point, and then in the sixties, I think that was a more, um, an even more sort of comprehensive uh, renewal of of how to, how you look at the Irish landscape. But I think Middleton, it's amazing the effect face had on him, and that that can sound cliched, but even when he went to Barcelona, when he went to Australia, um, there's immediately a shift, but there is a visual vocabulary that he finds to deal with that um, that is very personal and very original. And I think he um, he always sought out new landscapes. But he always allowed them to, to, in a way, inform his language. And um, so he never imposes a view on landscape, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. He, you know, he, he responds. He responds to changes in it. He responds to his own understanding of it, his interest in it, um, and and then finds a language through that. And um, I think he, the places he painted a lot. You see different languages, different styles in them, and um, yeah. um, it, it, it's difficult to pin down exactly what you know where that bird came from, and in particularly, um, and certainly he had a great respect for you'd say that the northern landscape tradition he came from, and um, you know kept a hands eye painting for many years. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. And um, but then there, there is always that that urge to change it. But he, I mean, I think his great thing was he was so open to. To, to stimuli of different places and and then to sort of work out how to paint them. Yeah. Well, Dickon, um, that has been uh, very illuminating as ever. And thank you so much um, for working with us um, in making these uh, pictures more uh, understandable for uh, for uh, perhaps viewers or people looking at our catalogues. And we always appreciate uh, your input. And I'm delighted that uh, you've been able to join us this afternoon. So hopefully we will see you soon and uh, maybe that you'll get a chance to, to come down and view the sale. Um, towards the, so the auction is on um, Wednesday, the 1st of March. Um, which is a full month earlier than we normally have it. So, uh, <laughs> that's that's a, quite a quite a shift in our tradition, our traditional calendar for our Irish art sales. Um, but there you go. But listen, once again, thank you so much, Dick, and I appreciate it very much. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. Nice to speak to you. Thanks.